language for asking me to speak about uh, Manitoki Nakunigewin, which is uh, the Great Dirt Law. It's a law of the nation, Grand Council Treaty Number Three. The resource law came about uh, during times when uh, some of our communities were involved in uh, self-government uh, community discussions. And part of our uh, processes involved uh, investigating how, uh, how uh, self-government was done down south for our brothers and sisters in the United States. So we had opportunities to visit tribes in uh, Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota, and most notably, we, we, we went for an orientation at, uh, at uh, Navajo Nation. We also visited uh, the Hickory tribes in, uh, in uh, Arizona or New Mexico. We also visited the Wallapai in, uh, again in uh, Mexico, New Mexico and Arizona. So during those times, you know, we came to the determination that uh, the way they financed their uh, self-government was through through resource-based uh, agreements. You know, with uh, various components. You know, they derived uh, they derived uh, fiscal fiscal uh, capacity through, uh, like, say, the railroad systems they have in the states through uh, AT&T, you know, the telecommunications lines they have in the territory. Plus, they derived uh, incomes from uh, resource revenue sharing agreements with uh, mining and uh, other resource extraction activities such as uh, forestry, as well as uh, other uh, resource-based uh, resource act activities. That's how they finance their, uh, their self-governance down there. You know, and seeing that, we you know, we brought it back home. You know, we used to have a delegation. Some of the chiefs go down there with us, and uh, and they brought those concepts to the Treaty Three Chiefs tables. You know, and they start talking about them, and then uh, then uh, shortly after we started uh, trying to promote that type of uh, arrangements with uh, with Ontario or Canada. You know, along came uh, a proposal by uh, Manitoba Hydro and on Ontario Hydro where they were going to create a super, super line that was going to cross the Treaty Tree territory to, uh, to provide uh, power to southern Ontario. You know, so our leadership of the day, our elders, our people, you know, said, you know, hey, we are third order of government here. They need to talk to us, you know, they shouldn't be excluding us from their discussions. So we did uh, initiate discussions with uh, Manitoba Hydro and uh, Ontario Hydro, and uh, we did uh, our, our leadership of the day, had uh, several, several meetings with them. We, we advised them that we needed to be involved. This was our territory, and um, so eventually they, they backed out, you know, they didn't want to cross our territory you know, they didn't want to give in to our uh, our request or call them demands or whatever, but uh, they decided they'd go another route, and that's through southern Ontario, I mean southern Manitoba, through uh, Minnesota, and, um, you know, down to southern Ontario. That's how they they did their uh, super line they were proposing. So, so, so we lost that opportunity, so, uh, and then along came, uh, a couple of years later, Bell Canada came around proposing to build a fiber optic line through, through Treaty 3 territory, you know. So, so they started engaging uh, communities on an individual basis. They met with uh, First Nation community leadership and uh, offered, them, offered them a fiscal package, you know, for permission to cross their reserve and this and that. And, um, but then, but then uh, further down, uh, down the road, you know, with, uh, the, with the discussions, they came up with the concept that, hey, hey, what I do with my community, if I provide uh, Bell Canada across my territory, it is going to have rippling, rippling in, in effects on the rest of Treaty 3. We have, uh, as a collective, 28 First Nations in in Treaty 3 territory, and it also includes two, two communities in Manitoba. 
So they said, uh, some of the chiefs said, uh, you know what, Bell Canada, you should go talk to the leadership at uh, Grand Council Treaty Number 3. And at that time, our Grand Chief was uh, the Basanikut, you know, and uh, he was a very, very astute politician, you know, very well, well spoken, intelligent, and all that. So, um, so they uh, engaged in uh, some some talks with uh, Bell Canada and our uh, Grand Chief and his Executive Council, which consisted of uh, three three tribal chiefs. So, uh, so in the absence of any kind of vehicle that would allow uh, uh, proponents to come into our territory and and develop some uh, some projects you know we didn't have a mechanism or a vehicle to provide that that permission so what they did was uh, the executive council of uh, treaty 3 passed a resolution permitting uh, bell canada to indeed carry out their proposal to construct a fiber optic land through the grand council treaty number 3 but on the conditions that Bell Canada would provide a fiscal package and a table, table that would enable the people of the Grand Council to begin developing our own law that would uh, eventually displace what, uh, what type of regime Ontario has in terms of issuing permits and licensing while they operate in our territory, the Grand Council Treaty Number 3, with. Uh, which encompasses uh, 55,000 square miles, you know, in, in northwestern Ontario. So that was the concept that, uh, and yes, uh, Bell Canada agreed to that uh, proposal, you know, because they wanted so badly to construct their line. So they agreed to the, those conditions, and so so Treaty 3 embarked on probably the biggest uh, consultation efforts ever done in our territory. It involved everybody, like say, the working group that was established was made up of our uh, our uh, leaders in the, our uh, brother and sister organizations, like the tribal councils, the health councils, you know, this and that. that uh, I I happened to be be part of that group. I was a self-government uh, governance coordinator for one of the tribal councils at that time. So I was involved right from day one and. Uh, and in terms of uh, consultations, there was uh, facilitators um, engaged in three tribal areas, one in Fort Francis, one in Kenora, and one, one in, uh, <clears throat> in Dryden. And those facilitators were engaged so they could hear the voices of uh, people in those areas, in the tribal areas, so it involved everybody. We also had uh, g large gatherings, you know, we'd have, uh, we'd have our resource law uh, gatherings at, at different locations. Usually they were held in uh, roundhouses or if one wasn't available we'd do it in the community complexes and uh, and it involved everybody. It was not just about leadership, it was about all of us getting together, our elders, people that worked in band offices or, or, or in general any person that wanted to be involved, provide input into, into creating and de developing that law. So that's that's how um, Manitoki Anakunigewin came about, you know, and uh, at the very outset, when after we've had our working, working group meetings, and when we finally established what uh, our work plan was going to look like, you know, and uh, what the people recommended was that we feast, we feast that work plan, you know, and uh, we faced moving forward to ensure that things would go accordingly. And each time we we hit a mi milestone within the work plan, again we'd we'd uh, take take a step back and review the whole process and establish you know establish if we were indeed on the, on the path towards uh, achieving our, our 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 end goal you know and the outcome we wanted in uh, reviewing you know uh, our outcomes. At certain intervals, we went. We went to ceremony. We take it to the ceremony, and we seek our traditional advice and guidance, and see if we were on the right track. Because we didn't want to jeopardize, you know, the future, our future, you know, with uh, with something that would uh, not would not work, you know, effectively within our within our nation. 
So that was the whole process throughout that whole process. And I don't know if it was by design or the intent of the Creator, you know, when the, when we decided we were going to do that, when the work plan was was uh, created, when the agreement was signed with uh, Bell Canada, the, the process itself was uh, completed, uh, an agreement in principle was was uh, agreed to, you know, four, A's, four years to the day it started. So after it was agreed in principle that uh, that our law was complete, they uh, they recommended that we convene another gathering of the people, which took place in our Rainy River, Rainy River First Nation, you know, and uh, the purpose of that meeting would to be to be the review to review the 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 document the draft document which we did over a couple of days. And um, after a couple of days, you know, the people, our elders agreed that yes, we indeed had a law that would, uh, that would fulfill the, the wishes of our, our people in the context of the desired outcomes they wanted when we engaged with, uh, with proponents that come in our territory. But one, one thing that I often look at as one of the one of the moments that really touched my heart was our own people our elders the lead spokesman of the elder got up with that document he held it in hand and he directed his uh, attention to myself who was grand chief by then and he said uh, grand chief he said in ojibwe he said in ojibwe Kawinin <laughs> Minago e cheese cheese is same as a jibago sand and go on is what kai go on. To put it in uh, in English, my elder, our elder spokesman told me, said Grand Chief, we cannot pretend that we know everything. What we are requiring you to to do is take this document to ceremony because only the creator and the spirits know, knows, knows these things, you know, knows about these things. And uh, we will ask you that uh, you conduct that cer ceremony in due course. So what took place right, right after that uh, meeting is uh, within a few days, I, uh, along with uh, the executive director of the day and the tribal chiefs of the day, we engaged uh, a knowledge keeper who had a sweat lodge also did shake tent was also a sun dancer and that and uh, we took the document to him we sat down for a couple of days we went through the document and uh, what we what he required was uh, we needed to formulate some questions what uh, how we would ask those questions in ceremony so that's what we did for a couple of days and then um, after the couple of days, you know, when we were leaving that day, our uh, knowledge keeper or the person we were engaging advised us, I will smoke my pipe tonight. He said, uh, I will smoke my pipe tonight and I will ask my spirits, see how we proceed moving forward, you know, relative to uh, ratifying or approving the, the law itself. So that's what he did. He, um, he smoked his pipe that evening and um, next morning he called and said he wanted to get together again and uh, we went back, we sat down with him and, uh, and then he's described I'll call it a traditional validation process. He outlined what we needed to do to get that uh, law ratified. He said we needed to uh, 
erect uh, four, four sweat lodges at uh, Powau Island. Mm -hmm. One sweat lodge would, uh, would be sitting in the, in the east, east direction, one in the south and one west and one in the north. And what would happen was uh, before sunrise, all four sweat lodges would uh, go simultaneously, but Manitoki uh, in the resource law would go into the east, east, east lodge, and that would be all that uh, would take place in there is to have a, a scan, a scan of the document by, by the spirits and the creator, and um, and the rest, the three other lodges will go simultaneously. Those lodges would be open for uh, for individuals or people that wanted to, to seek healing or just wanted to visit uh, the spirits. And so, so that's what took place. And the second morning, it went to the South Lodge in uh, Manitoki, Nakunigewin went there. One of the instructions we received that was uh, the lodge <clears throat> sitting on the south south side had to be a, a woman lodge keeper, you know, to rec recognizing that uh, grandmother sits to the south of us. So, so that's what we did. So the Nitoki Nakunige when the document went into the southern lodge that day while the others were going again. On the morning of the third day, the Manitoki Nakunigewin went to the Eastern Lodge, you know, and the uh, same thing while the others were going, three other lodges going at the same time. On the morning of the fourth day, the Manitoki Nakunigewin went into the northern, north lodge sitting on, on the north side. And then our final instructions were after, after four days of uh, Getting uh, Manitoki Nakunigewin reviewed in ceremony, we were instructed that the final final instruction was that we had to take Manitoki Nakunigewin into into a shake tent on the evening of the fourth day, which we did. And the instructions told me that uh, the shake tent uh, person had to be at least four degree Mitewin, you know, and it took some time to identify an individual that, uh, that had uh, those credentials, column credentials for lack of a better word, but uh, we did find one. So on the fourth evening, we, uh, we held, held that shake tent. Uh, Manitoki Nakunigewin went in there and it underwent um, scanning by the spirits and uh, it came. And then after the ceremony, I was instructed by the spirits that uh, Yes, the resource law looked looked good, and they they saw nothing negative about it, and, uh, and they also talked positively and constructively how it was going to impact uh, impact uh, the nation in a good way. So, and then the final instruction was, now we give it back to you, and we expect that you will present it to to your chiefs, your people, tomorrow at an assembly, and they will make the final ratification. So that's what we did uh, October the 3rd, uh, 1997. 97 we, or 96, I'm not certain, but uh, one of those two, we, uh, that was the first item on our agenda, and that's when uh, Manitoki Nakunigewin was ratified and became the law of the nation, you know, a law that was based on our culture, using our traditional means of our governance, you know, ceremonies and this and that. So, you know, after it was ratified and it became law of the, of the nation, I was asked by people, leadership, elders and others, that uh, if I could uh, document how that process went, went you know, and um, again, being a traditional person, you know, I. I took it to ceremony and I asked if I could, uh, if I could document Manitoki Nakunigewin, like, I guess in paper form, you know, and uh, they said uh, Manitoki Nakunigewin and how it was achieved cannot be a template for any future lawmaking ventures, you know, because, you know, the, the persons that you engaged, you know, seeking, uh, seeking direction from uh, spirits, got their gifts in a certain way. So each time 
we, we consider uh, another law and whoever it is we engage to be our knowledge keeper or the one that conducts ceremony and seeks, uh, seeks advice through, through, the, through the ceremony will have, will have achieved their own gifts and their own teachings, their own knowledge from an, a, another source and they'd be instructed in how they conduct their ceremonies. So that's why I say it can never be the same as how uh, Manitoki Nakunigewin was achieved. You know, it can never be a real template, but, uh, but we have used it in the context of uh, this is how we, we used it as a guidance when the when subsequent uh, lawmaking uh, processes were initiated, like uh, the, child, the child care law, which was passed in 2005. It followed the Manitoki uh, Nakunige as a as a, a guiding as a guiding uh, form, you know they they followed the way how uh, traditional protocols were done this and that so that's that's how uh, that's how uh, Manitoki Nakunige influ influenced uh, the child care law and it was be it will be the same you know in future any future laws that we're we're considering it'll be up to the individual that we engage you know and according to how how they receive their gifts so that's how uh, any future lawmaking will be, will be you know conducted so that's how we established uh, Manitoki Nakunige when was um, you know our traditional way of uh, Lamik and so that's and that's Manitoki Nakunigewin as it sits today, Miwich.